Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we didn't even wait for it. Hey, hey no, no table talk. You just gave away your whole deck of cards. Whole things are, whole things are waste now. You was just talking earlier. I was being a good host. That was a Toastmasters jerk. Fellas, I got some real table talk. If you're interested. I'm interested, Freddy. Who we gossiping about? No gossip, gentlemen. This time, it's my business. So, my father was always a very conservative type guy. He wouldn't trust the government with his boxer shorts, let alone anything having to do with his health. Anyways, as you both know, my father's health has been fading lately, and he's been refusing all his treatments and such, so... Weekend before last, I get a call saying he's on his deathbed. He wants to see me before he goes. Uh, my condolences. Yeah, real shame, buddy. Eh, he was a crook. So, I go to visit him, and I couldn't believe it. He looks sick as a dog! He's got his television set up so he can watch his soaps and everything. But his house ain't in the best shape since he took up collecting rabbits when he left my mother. They kinda wrecked the place. It's weird, I know. So I shake his hand and I ask him how he's doing and all, and he pulls me real close and he starts telling me about this formula of his and how I should go talk to my cousin. Except he never tells me which cousin it is on account of he croaks right then and there. Gosh, well did you find a cousin? Well, that's the interesting part, you see. So, I was real curious about who this cousin might be. But that's when I remembered. My old man always loved to play ladder ball. Ladder ball? Yeah, you know, ladder ball. It's kind of like, um, a frisbee golf, except... I know what it is. Well, like I was saying, ladder ball was my old man's escape. He played it whenever things got him down. It was a special sport to him. So special, in fact, that he only let his favorite people play with him. So you ever get to play? What do you think? I know whoever my old man trusted his formula with must have played ladder ball with him before. So as my father passed, I slipped my hand into his pocket and I grabbed his car keys. Sure enough, I found the full unabridged copy of his will in his glove box. The old man keeps his will in his car? Like I said, he was a conservative guy. I keep my will in my medicine cabinet. No one asked you. You're not in it, smuck. Looks like I'm missing out, putz. You guys done with your tantrum yet? I mean, come on. All apologies, Freddy. Continue. Thank you. So I mail out this will to the whole extended family, as everyone knows you're supposed to do, except I've, well, I've altered the last page to give his ladder ball set away to the person he played it with the most. Us Kaczynskis, we're just competitive like that. Now, wouldn't you know it, I had three people right back within three to five business days, detailing how Pops always loved to have them over and how they'd always have the best time playing ladder ball. Now, two out of three of these suckers was female, and I knew very well that my father, the chauvinist he was, would never invite a lady over to play ladder ball. So I copied the remaining guy's address down, borrowed my dad's car, and uh, made the two hour drive to this guy's house. Your pop sounds like a real bad guy, friend. Yeah, wait till you meet his nephew. Jeez, this guy was a screwball. Classic hoarder, a medical thing. He said he had the papers to prove it, but then again, he had a lot of other papers and I wasn't about to go digging through his trash to find him. So I knock on his door, right? And he peeks through his blinds like he's been waiting for me or something. And he says to me all nervously, Bruce! Where'd you put the clamato juice? How should I know? You're the only one that drinks it! What did, you say, what did your cousin say again? He says, are you alone? Now I'm thinking, what is this guy, some kind of fugitive? Last thing I need was for the law to get involved. But I'm itching to get my hands on this formula, so to speak, so I said, Of course I'm alone. It's me, your cousin Freddy. So he lets me in and he pours me a glass of milk, which I thought was peculiar, but a boy needs his calcium, so I didn't say nothing. We get to talking and, uh, you know, I mention I'm Harry Kaczynski's boy. And all of a sudden, his, uh, his eyes get real wide like supper plates, and his voice gets all quiet, and he tells me to come with him. So, Leon takes me to this uh, back room of his, right? And I'm thinking, oh boy, I'm really in some hot water now, on account of there's only like two chairs in this room. Look like a dungeon to me. So, Leon locks the door, right? And I'm praying to every god I can think of by now. So, Leon sits me down and he starts telling me about how my father's this like real recluse type and all this stuff I already knew, you know, whatever. But then he tells me something I never heard before. Turns out my old man's some kind of a scientist. A 
Apparently, his little obsession with rabbits had a purpose after all. You know, it was all very confusing given I don't know much about general maths and stuff, but turns out rabbits have some kind of chemical in their milk that lets humans live for, oh, I don't know, 400 years. You know, sounds like hell if you ask me, but I guess some folks are interested in that idea. You're bluffing, right? <laughs> He's bluffing. I believe him. So Leon tells me that my father was never able to isolate the chemical to get this thing to work. And he probably just called me over to ask me to continue his research and stuff when he was gone. Since when are you a scientist? That's what I said. So just the other night, Leon was packing up some lab equipment, right? And one of the cups of rabbit's milk rolls out of the box and starts glowing. Well, I guess the whole time all anybody had to do was shake the damn thing to get it to work. So Leon tells me he's going to meet this client of my father's in an undisclosed location to try and sell this thing. Only thing is, this client of his is a real wild card, right? And Leon's pretty nervous about the whole affair. Nervous enough, in fact, that he agreed to give me half of the profits if I'd be his middleman. So as you can imagine, I accepted. Only condition was, I had to be real careful with this product, because there was only one bottle left. So I practice my business voice, and uh, Leon drives me up to this parking lot. I mean, imagine that! A parking lot! Undisclosed, of course, but still. I mean, we waited in the car for like 45 minutes, too, but I didn't mind. Leon's got that book, The Pearl, on tape. No way! You read Steinbeck! Boy, do I ever! Right at the cliffhanger, these girls show up, no car, nothing. Just three fellas, one of them in a wheelchair. I had a bad feeling about it, I don't know. Something was off about these girls, and I couldn't put my finger on it. But they get to explaining their father was the beloved dictator of the Pennsylvania Republic. You don't mean you were talking to... Francisco Pennsylvania? Why, yes. That's exactly who I was talking to. Oh my god, the man's a crook. Well, the girls tell me their father's only got a few days left to live, and they're looking to extend his rule as long as possible because they've got no sons to take up the position. I'm telling you guys, I could see the murder in this man's eye. He was one evil guy, even when he was all confined to his chair like that. I was feeling really guilty, but I needed the money, so I handed over the bottle of milk. Freddy, how could you? Relax, I ain't done. So, as I was handing it over, I started thinking about my morals. I mean, was 2,000 bucks really worth a whole country's future? Wait, it was only, it was only 2,000? So, I stopped for a second, take a nice long look at the guy, and drop the bottle on the ground. Whole thing shatters. No. Yes. The girls start bawling their eyes out, and Francisco's got this real mean look in his eye, but... I knew I did the right thing. What they do to you? Well, they were pretty distraught, you know. They were cursing me out and calling me pretty foul names, but... You know what I told them? Well, what? I, I, I'm in suspense here! Yeah, what are you telling them, Freddy? I said to them, Don't go crying over spilled milk now! Oh! Oh!